Okay, let's talk about costs. And costs can go from uh, very simple, like uh, if you go to the store and you buy a pair of shoes for fifty dollars, uh, the cost is is quite uh, easy to understand. But when we talk about business costs and uh, and, and things for their own, like opportunity costs, uh, it can be quite complicated and not so obvious, and uh, you can change your decisions. Uh, so first, let's talk about fixed costs which are constant regardless of output. So an example of that, if you're setting up a business, you have to buy a building, uh, and then you have to pay taxes on that insurance. Um, you have to buy machinery. Um, and these, so these are costs that can be planned on and um, uh, budgeted for. Uh, variable costs depend on output. So they go up or down depending on how much you're making. So like materials, like uh, labor would be uh, a, a variable cost. Um, now some labor, if you have to hire someone on a salary um, and you've already contracted with them to pay them so much for the entire year, um, that would be more of a fixed cost, but a variable cost would be like labor um, where you're paying by the hour. You can cut their hours if you need to, increase the hours. Marginal cost is cost for one more unit. So the very lowest marginal cost would be um, materials. Uh, and then like the electricity or whatever goes into making that product. Now, if you've maxed out your uh, production and then to make one more, you have to pay overtime or you have to buy more machinery or something like that, then the marginal cost can go quite high. Um, and... Uh, uh, but sometimes it's it's usually just for one more unit. Um, the average cost is the total cost divided by the units, number of units. So you take all these costs and add them up and divide it by the total. So if, if we're making something and, and the total, the, the, the material cost, the marginal cost is it's like $20, but we have all these fixed costs in there, and these could be a million dollars, but we made 10000 you got to divide that in there and that would give an additional cost. So the total cost divided by the number of units, all of these added together. Okay, <clears throat> sunk cost is money that's already spent as a result of a past decision. Now these sometimes can get uh, emotional and will make a wrong choice because of, of emotion. Um, so like for example, a sunk cost would be, let's say we buy a copy machine and the copy machine cost us a thousand dollars, and um, and we're printing say ten thousand copies a month, right? <coughs> and uh, um, it costs the printing, the ink, and toner stuff costs us uh, uh, ten cents a sheet. So we're happy with our printers, costing us a thousand dollars a month to run. We paid a thousand dollars to buy it, and then. Uh, across the street, someone comes in and builds a copy uh, business, and uh, they're only charging ten, nine cents a copy, and it's cheaper just to go across. But you think, well, I just spent a thousand dollars on my my copier. I got to use my copier. I spent a thousand dollars on it because I just bought it last month. Well, that's a sunk cost, and we don't consider that. What we look here is your copier that you bought just cost ten cents. Uh, a sheet and the copy center across the street costs nine cents. Um, so we'll go there regardless of our emotional attachment to our new copier. Okay, we don't consider sunk costs once they're spent. Um, opportunity costs. Now this opportunity cost is the cost of something. So let's say I went into the store and I bought a pair of shoes that cost me $50. Okay, but uh, if I'm a, uh, a consulting engineer and I can make $100 an hour, right, and traveling across town, buying the shoes, I did it in the middle of the day, I worked one hour less. The opportunity costs then were $100 and the total cost is $150 because I lost an hour of work. I could have paid a 
uh, you know, someone who I, 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 someone who works for me and they, I pay them $10 an hour, I could have paid them $10 for one hour to go over and buy the shoes for me. And uh, I would have saved $90 because I could have made $100 the time it cost them to pay, pay them $10. So opportunity costs. Another example would be like a vacation. I go on a vacation and, then, and I pay out of pocket for my vacation. I pay $5,000. Okay. And uh, I take two weeks on my vacation. Well, if I'm making $100 an hour, that's $4,000 a week. And so if I go for two weeks, that's $8,000. So the cost of my vacation was 5000 5, in cash, but it was 8000 in lost income. Now, I'm not saying you should go on vacation. Uh, I'm a teacher. I believe in vacation. But uh, there is an opportunity cost to that. And that's why I have, I know a contractor who makes a lot of money, uh, much, much more than me. And I first met him like 14 years ago, and I, I went on a six-week vacation and uh, uh, went camping up in, in Canada, I think. And uh, after I was talking to him, he's like, that's more vacation than I've ever taken. And he was, he's much older than I am. And because the opportunity cost of him going on a vacation was too high, and he wouldn't justify it. Um, so anyway, <coughs> uh, true cost then is the opportunity cost, and oh, the other opportunity costs, another type of opportunity cost that I didn't mention. One is labor then, the other is money. So if I have say fifty thousand dollars, right, and I decide I'm going to buy a nice car. So I buy a car for $50,000. And then I'm a contractor and a property opens up that uh, would be a really good property to re, uh, remodel and resell for, for a profit. Then it costs $50,000. Well, I already spent my $50,000 on a new car. So the opportunity cost then was that I couldn't use that to buy the property and remodel and make money off of that. So that's a lost uh, opportunity cost as buying the $50,000 car. Um, recurring costs um, are costs that are anticipated and known uh, and they occur at uh, regular intervals. So oil change on a car or a truck. Uh, house has to be re-roofed every 20 years, um, new tires, things like that are recurring costs we can plan them for. Non-recurring costs are one of the kind expenses that occur at irregular intervals. So uh, I have a new car and the transmission goes out and I got to replace it. I was expecting 200,000 miles of transmission. I only got 120. That's a non-recurring cost. Um, and uh, <coughs> Cash costs, that's the transaction of currency. You actually buy something um, and uh, it has uh, a value that you pay for. Um, a, a book cost, there are costs that do not involve the exchange of currency. So a lot of this is like depreciation. So if we, if we buy a property for $100,000 and, and we depreciate uh, $10,000 off for the first year, that's a book cost. We didn't spend any money, and we just depreciate the cost. That happens a lot of it, like cars. Businesses buy cars or properties. You can depreciate things, and that's a whole game you play on your taxes. Um, but uh, it doesn't involve a transaction of currency. It's just an accounting thing. All right, so that's uh, about costs, and there'll be questions in the homework that uh, you'll need that to know to solve, answer.